Hello, this is Daryl with Carte Blanche Media here, and I have as my guest today Omar Rodriguez Bia, and he is the art director of Singular Bull. Uh, Omar, thank you so much for being with me today there. Um, that being said, tell me a little bit more about yourself here. Sure. No, thank you, Daryl, oh. for the invitation. I'm very happy and excited about this conversation with you. I know we have met once, but definitely uh, I feel like uh, we make a, a good connection there. Um, so, yeah, I'm a creative consultant for small and medium businesses and in-house like creative departments. I uh, pretty much like help them with uh, graphic design, video, photography for their product or services. And um, yeah, I've been working uh, as a creative consultant under the name of Singular Bull for the past uh, four years, five years. Yeah, I started in two, 2018, kind of like, but uh, but yeah, and um, I'm um, I'm from Mexico, North Mexico. Yeah, I grew up in. Uh, a small border town, Nogales, Sonora. So uh, yeah, I moved to the U.S. when I was approximately like 19 years. So I've been here like what 20 something, 20 plus. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that's that's kind of like a little bit about me. Uh, Thank you. So yeah, if you've been here, tw I think if you've been here more than five years in Phoenix, anyway, that just makes you native. So <laughs> like, that's <laughs> that, that's what I like to say, anyway. Um, and you already kind of went into this a little bit, like you kind of started your agency in 2018, like what inspired you to go, go ahead and start your own design agency though? You touched on it a little bit, but maybe you could go into it a little bit more. Sure. Um, you know, uh, I, I became parent in 2017 and I was working, I had a current like nine to five, like a regular job and, uh, you know, starting like having this, uh, uh, new experiences with my newborn baby and all the things that require and demand you know i i we definitely uh my wife and i thought about like you know having a more flexible schedule one of us so uh as we kind of thought about it and kind of like start putting like the cards on the table we decided that uh, i was the one that had the option to be more flexible so I definitely like jump in and I was doing some freelance already. Um, so I kind of had the idea, you know, like th there's, there's, there's opportunity out there and and I think I can do it, you know? So yeah, that was kind of like the main reason because I needed more like a flexible schedule and be there, kind of be more um, open for, you know, all these things that require him to be a parent. Very cool. And what would you say has kind of been your biggest challenge since you started there? Um, yes, I think, you know, coming from a design background and going to school for design and creativity, you don't really get this like business, you know, education, training, whatever. So kind of like changing the mindset of the creative to a business, it was very challenging to me because, I mean, I don't I don't have any kind of background on entrepreneurship like business my dad was like a business owner but uh i don't know it's just it was one of those things that you don't really get involved you know kind of you just like seeing from the background um so that was very challenged to me kind of make that switch and have this kind of like business mentality and think about business you know like more like you know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be out there and so that means that i need to look for opportunities whatever you know kind of like you know and, and 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 that definitely require more energy for me um you know particularly um uh, you know being an uh an introvert you know it's 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 kind of like a challenge you know like a you uh i mean pretty much like myself you know coming from this like artistic more kind of like uh maker mentality and you know, do the transition to numbers, business, transaction, all that was was very challenging. Thank you. And kind of what would you say has been your biggest success though so far? Sure. I think it's kind of like related to that, to the other question that you make, but uh you know, uh, overcoming an imposter syndrome, I think that was a very kind of like uh a biggest success to me because you know, coming from all these backgrounds as an introvert, as I say before. 
it's you you start like thinking all having all these thoughts about you know you why you do your skills and all that and 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 overcoming that and 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 most of like learn about it and kind of like embrace it because I don't think you well uh, at least for myself I don't feel like I have overcoming I still have those thoughts and sometimes you know like I question myself but kind of like learning and embracing and know where it comes from I think that was a big a big success to me to really kind of like you know um be out there and trying to make it work and you know like uh, meeting more people and start kind of like changing your mindset um that was to me that's that was a a big thing you know mindset is yeah key if you're trying to be an entrepreneur you got to get that uh, mindset right i definitely struggle with that myself so you are not alone you sure and for, yeah and, and yeah. That, that's one of the things that you know you start meeting people and i mean it's very common but mm-hmm. you know like since we don't talk about it sometimes you think like you know like oh this is something really bad i shouldn't talk about it but you know you start meeting all these people and they talk about the same team same feelings and same challenges it's just kind of like this is normal it's part of it and you know just face it kind of like <clears throat> De- definitely part of the journey i would say mm-hmm. so yeah um, uh, shifted a little bit here um would you say you have a favorite not necessarily a marketing book but a business book or a graphic design book or anything there that kind um, of just has really helped your help you kind of build your business or just kind of think differently i do have one but i'm currently reading um atomic habit i don't know if you hear about it which i'm, I'm kind of like in the yeah. first chapter yeah. and i really like it because that's something that definitely like you as a business owner entrepreneur that's something that really needs to be on top of it you know be very organizer and have these habits you know but you know when i started uh freelancing um as i say you know i was working for a for a company so i didn't really have this business you know background or not human so the first question was kind of like how much should i charge you know like how people do it you know so i found this book uh, which is called psychology of uh, graphic design pricing or pricing yeah something like that by michael janda and it's a really great book i mean it's very easy to read and uh you know the worksheets and all the the things that you do through the book really can explain how to come up with these prices and and he covers like the different price of assets, you know, like the value aspects and the hourly uh, price, you know, charge. Um, so you have these two perspectives of how to charge for your services. So it was really good. And it was really um, like an open mind for me and kind of like know exactly, you know, how to quote or charge for my services. He does, he does, uh, he does have a podcast and, you know, like all these Instagrams, uh, content which is i i kind of like consume too on the every time you know is is the podcast just name uh or michael janda or does it have some other name to it uh that, that was going to be my next question what's sure. what are some your favorite podcasts there? Podcast, but, yeah. yes um well i will say that i haven't i haven't really uh listened to the latest one because i i kind of like Stay on the social media, you know, channel. Mm-hmm. But I, yeah. I think it's kind of like the same. Uh, it should be, mm-hmm. it should be the same. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And so, Michael John does probably a favorite podcast. Is there a favorite informative YouTube or video? Uh, it, it sounds like he has a YouTube as well. But like, is there um, some other YouTube or video series that you kind of watch or get, gain value mm-hmm. from? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I um, I used to watch a lot of the. I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, the future by Chris Doe. I think I have heard that name twice there. Um, actually, I, yeah. in these interviews that I've been doing. So yeah, yeah, yeah he's of. really yeah he's really. I used to uh, watch a lot of his YouTube videos, and now like I stay with the social media too. But uh, definitely. That was another kind of like uh, piece of content that really kind of changed my mind because he talks about like uh, how to price and how to sell and how to 
you know, the other, the other aspect of having a business as a designer, not only focusing into the creative, you know, maker area, but kind of like do the business. So he's really good the way he talk and he present and all that. And, and so that was, that was a really good, uh, informative video that i that i used to watch i uh, as i say i mean it's been a while that i don't watch the full video sometimes i just kind of like log in and into youtube and kind of watch you know half of it or kind of part of it but uh, definitely like his uh social media content i i read that like every time that it appears on my feed <laughs> cool very cool and it, has there been a um really helpful resource or tool that you've used for your business in the past year at all mm -hmm. mm. you know actually um as i as i mentioned i started working as a consultant on 2018 but i took a break during the pandemic 2018 2019 and part of 2020 i i still um i still work with some of the clients that i had at that time but I took a break because of the pandemic and my second uh, newborn, which kind of like I, I we decided just to kind of lock down and, you know, not go out for any reason because it was kind of like, you know, like a kind of weird uh, time, you know, so we kind of decided strange. to, yeah, it was strange. So uh, I decided just to take a break during that time and I kind of reactivated uh, on um, uh, the beginning of this year it's kind of like late last year and the beginning of this year so uh and one of the the platforms that i found that i wasn't familiar with it it's called alignable mm -hmm. are you mm -hmm. familiar with that I, i'm familiar with it I, you know what like i would love to get your opinion on that because i think it's like trying to be like a linkedin there mm -hmm. a little bit but i've i'm kind of like on there sometimes but i don't know if it's like really worth my time to be on it so go ahead and give me your feedback on that you, you had some good success with i mean so far i i can say that yes i have uh i started using this year so i'm still kind of like to learning and kind of trying to engage with uh, the platform and kind of like then uh, learn the the house but uh you know like linkedin it's it's kind of like business professional kind of like but uh lineable is it's more direct to people who is really doing business or business owner okay so and and the way that they break they have these groups too uh, and okay. that is kind of like phoenix groups and chandler groups and stuff like that mm -hmm. so they do a lot of like networking events and um you can engage with them and like the platform will let you know every time that a new business uh open an account in your area so mm -hmm. that's a good opportunity to kind of like you know introduce yourself and kind of like do some follow-up and you know um okay. and the, the other thing that i just kind of like start doing it is the they call it uh smart connect networking events and it's basically like speed networking online, but it's it's with the Phoenix Group channel, so you get exposed to these businesses and people who is uh, doing something. Oh, I was just gonna say. So, have you gotten actual clients from Alignable yes, I got, there? Okay, awesome. Yes, I got I got two clients uh, from my last Smart Connect, Very which cool was one. it was last month. Uh, one it's uh, a mortgage lender. And the other mm -hmm. one is just kind of like uh, this lady who is doing uh, their own kind of like it, it's it's a entrepreneur which is doing uh, craft you know like okay. candles and stuff like that. Yeah. So I'm I'm kind of I'm gonna help her with uh, product photography. So very cool. Yeah, um, it's 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 kind of cool. I I kind of like it, but uh, definitely I need to spend more time on it to really learn it and 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 see their full potential yeah I, I definitely have some contacts that are like really active on alignable but mm -hmm. i and i don't know people have been like pinging me to join alignable uh, -huh. uh for a while and then a good friend like ping me like no you should join it and i did and i've I was just i've just kind of wondered how to how to kind of navigate it still I'm still try to figure it out so 
love to connect with you on there afterwards sure. here if uh, yeah. we're not already here so no no that's that's great great resource yeah, it's, thank you it, it's yeah. a little it's a little annoying i just need to kind of like change my settings because you get like a lot of emails <laughs> yeah <laughs> like a lot of notifications that i mean you know some some things that you don't really need to but yeah. uh, i think it's more kind of like a setting that i really have in to deep and kind of change it but uh, in terms of uh, lead and connection, I, I I think it's a really good platform. I okay. which I was I was very surprised because I I have been very uh, active on LinkedIn, uh -huh. but uh, haven't really kind of get any kind of lead from from LinkedIn. Yeah, interesting. Okay, well, two more questions for you here, oh. and then I'll, I'll I'll let you go. So. What would you say is the most impactful piece of advice that you could give those who are looking to improve their design or like design business or like if they needed help from you there? Like, what would you say is your most impactful piece of advice? Uh, I will say um, find the time to do a personal projects. I think so for me, that has been like uh, very impactful and very uh productive i will say and very effective maybe kind of adding that too because you know like just doing personal work and it gives me the opportunity to really uh, explore new tools new techniques new anything you know and that that can lead you into new opportunities new projects and i think that's that's very important to me and, I, and that's something that definitely i would recommend to any designer creative out there too really fine i know i know it's hard you know trying to kind of run a business or or just kind of like have your regular job and then family and everything it's it's difficult but definitely do the effort to to really find that time because you know for example like for me during the pandemic actually i was uh doing stop motion animation and that was something that i really wanted to to do and kind of explore but never really kind of focus in doing it so during that time i was like i need to do something because you know like be at home being at home like 24 7 it was difficult so i started doing it and just kind of like exploring you know like uh just playing around and kind of like trying to learn it and trying to kind of like see how the you know the process of creating something uh, so I start creating these like short stop motion animation with, uh, you know, just regular objects, you know, and uh, one of the clients that I had at that time saw what I was doing in, and they uh, asked me to help them to create like three, st two stop motion animations and a short video for, for them. So it was really cool. And that was something that I wasn't really kind of like doing it. So I was kind of like, oh my gosh, this is, I mean, it's paying off, you know? <laughs> so, uh, cool. yeah, so definitely like, you know, trying to find that time to to do personal projects, you know? People watch, you know, people out there is kind of like, look at your stuff and look what you, other people is doing. So they may, you know, get in contact with them for, for whatever they're doing. And gotcha. I, I got... <sighs> Another question just kind of popped into my mind here. Mm -hmm. We can cut this out if you, if you want, but this might open a can of worms. But um, what is your opinion on the impact of like AI art on the design world right now here? Mm -hmm. We might have already talked about this, but I don't know if you want to skip that for after that everyone can do that. Sure. Okay. No. Uh, well, let's see. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely. I. It's definitely changing the market. Mm -hmm. the way i see it is definitely changing the market you know it's it's i mean it's amazing the things that you can create you know it's it's just impressive um uh, but i the way i see it is at this point i think is definitely something that we can use as a process and and kind of like incorporate that as a part of our creative process to just generate ideas and to kind of generate like a mock-up if you want to say that way you know, because mm -hmm. uh, sometimes, you know, it requires, you know, when you're trying to create something new, you, you just need to kind of like sketch it out and kind of like, you know, paint and or just kind of like put some color and then transfer that to the computer and trying to kind of like make something. But man, just 
doing all that with just a couple of words is just like yeah. it's amazing it's amazing mm -hmm. and and i think how i see it is that uh a lot of creative people are using it i think the problem is gonna be if there's a problem for sure when when kind of like the lay normal people start like messing around with that i don't know if that's going to be a good or bad because you know as a creative we have the taste we have the eye it's trained you know for mm -hmm. for a composition to create a composition but somebody who doesn't have it and he's just going to start creating something is gonna you know how it happened with the, all these tools that are out there like like mm. uh, that uh, are very practical for like for everybody but you start seeing like this repetition of like designs or in concept mm. and now you you don't see like who really created that image because yeah. it looks the same so mm -hmm. i think that's gonna have that could happen with uh ai on the design aspect you know area right. and, and probably with the with the writing too you know with the what is it called the chat gtp yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I yeah. think it, I think it's just gonna fall into like the same and it's gonna sound the same it's gonna look the same so maybe we'll get into a point where like people will know that it, it comes from there you know and and they will lose value or kind of like you know right. po power per se you know but in the production aspect is 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 great it's amazing it's 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 a really great tool i don't know where that is going to end but definitely something that as a creative we need to uh learn about it and kind of like uh at least kind of like you know understand it a little bit because uh mm -hmm. for sure for sure as i said i think that's going to be part of the creative process for now on you know yeah I agree. Um, I think you kind of have to e evolve there or get left behind a little bit, but just my opinion there. And last question for you there, uh, Omar, is how can people get a hold of you or learn a little bit more about you? What's kind of the best way? That's oh, sure. Uh, well, my I will say my website. They can go to my website, which is uh, www.singularbowl.com and um uh, social media i'm i i try to be very active uh, but sometimes you know time doesn't allow it but uh, definitely definitely they can go there and, and and check out some of my work which on instagram i'm my handler is at by by dot singular bowl and facebook is just like at at singular bowl which i'm i'm more active on instagram like facebook i I, I don't really use it, but uh, Instagram, I'm, I'm more active because I, I kind of like the the visual aspect of Instagram. Completely understandable for a designer there. So. <laughs> yeah. But, well, Omar Rodriguez Villa, thank you so much for taking the time today. I really do appreciate it. And you have a great rest of your day. Oh, yeah, sure. Thank you very much for the invitation. And it was a great talk talking to you. Thank you. Sure.